This is Sheffield, just as a clue, and it's become famous now for something other than snooker. singing in the rain. I love that bit, you know, when he, when he goes to walk up the wall. Oh, that's brilliant. I know him. I played snooker with him a couple of months ago. Get rid of him. Shut up. You'll blow me cover. Shut up. What walking up wall thing? Now, I'm Donald O'Connor, and, and that's the wall, so... So you don't sing? No. And you don't dance? No. Don't think I'm being nosy, but what do you do? That is this. Gentlemen, the Liverpudlian has landed. Chuffy Nora. All right, John. JP, you're in. You've done it all. Number two is Great Stephen man. Hendry going for a seventh world title. We'll just hang on, Stephen, and see who you draw. Number 20. And you have drawn number 20, goodness me, Jimmy White. Six times oh. world championship <laughs> runner-up. That's two tickets for tonight's match at the Crucible Theatre for the World Championship Snooker. Now we're talking. I believe in miracles. You came along. You, you sexify. Stick it on, Debra. You know I'm there.
gentlemen, for your entertainment, for one night only, before the World Snooker Final, it's the full Monty Snooker style. Take it away, boys. I don't know who she is, but I've got a feeling she's seen it all. <laughs> now then, John Parrott, would oh. Ali McCoy have got into that? <laughs> man. And there was one of the pots that was down to just Joe and John left. And Joe hadn't been having a good night. Mm. And there was about £40 in the kitty. Pound notes, ten bob notes. And um, John said to Joe, what have you got? And Joe said, I've got three tens. And John said, hard luck, I've got three jacks. So Joe, being a little bit in the height, picked the money up and stuck it in a pint pot of beer. Beer? Yeah. And John turned around and said, I was only joking, Joe. I've only got two jacks. <laughs> Joe had to get all the money tried out that was in the pint pot. Oh, yeah. Well, he could wind him up. So he wasn't the best loser in the world. I suppose that's why he was world champion for so many times. And, of course, I remember when Spencer won it in 77, of course, he played the 10 times world champion John Pullman. And uh, there's a lovely story about John Pullman when he was playing a match once. and. Uh, it was early on in the match, there hadn't been a ball potty. And he was left with a, a red near the top cushion, and it was a very fine cut. But it was such a reach, he had to get the long rest, you know, the long rest, the long cue. And he's hit it very thin as he intended, but it's come back off the cushion a little bit quicker than he thought. Wow. So he thought the cue was going to hit the long rest, and it, in, in his effort to dash it out of the way, he's dropped the long cue on the table. And it's rolled, and it's knocked every ball <laughs> to the side of the cushion. And Pullman put his hand on his chin and he went to the referee, how many away is that? <laughs> Another great character, John yeah, Pullman. <laughs> and of course, the year after, Ray Reardon won it for the only time here, didn't he? Uh, that, yeah, yeah, that was his sixth, uh, sixth time as well, yeah, his record yeah. time. And uh, I'll never forget his interview. Do you remember the interview he did with, uh, oh, with, with David, David Vine? David Vine after the match. Uh, that, but that, was a, that wasn't in the final, that was in the semi-final right. against Eddie Jones. That's yeah. right. And, uh, David said, well, what do you think? And Ray just broke through. He says, well, he says, you can't understand this game. He says, the things that happened. He said, two nights ago, he said, went to bed at 10 o'clock, actually. He says, get up, go down to the crucible. She couldn't pot a ball. What did I do the next night? Back to my friend Gordon Ingham's house. Five large gin and tonics, actually. Went down the next morning. Couldn't miss, actually. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> I used to love listening to Ray being yeah. interviewed. I don't think that's the secret to success, but it obviously worked for Ray that time. Mm. And then, of course, the man who commentated on all these finals, Ted Lowe, and it whispering Ted Lowe, who's retired a couple of years ago. And I always remember, uh, I don't know whether Ted sort of invented these off the cuff. I'll give you an example, one that always sticks in my mind. And it was after the 85 final when you beat Steve in the deciding frame. And we were at the Grand Prix in Reading, which was about six months later. And the final of the Grand Prix always coincides with the clocks going back an hour. Right. And uh, it turned out that you and Steve were in the final again, nine each, ready for this deciding frame. And you were breaking off. And Ted, now as I say, whether this is off the cuff or he wrote it that night thinking about it, in case he went to a deciding frame, he went, well, Dennis Taylor breaks off. Last night, we put our clocks back one hour. These two stars have put theirs back to April and the Crucible Theatre, Sheffield. 
<laughs> he was a star for me. What a voice. What a voice. Yeah, echo that. Well, uh, Doogie Donnelly's, of course, here, and he's been roving around.